Welcome to this screencast which focuses on how to understand a runner's performance based on split time analysis in WinSpits Pro. Uh, this screencast is presented by otraining.net. So let's first uh, open up WinSpits Pro uh, and uh, open up the event we are interested in. You can open up events uh, directly from the database like uh, we do here or we can import it through the import menu from uh, some file format. Uh, the, the race we are concentrating us on for, for this case is the national event in France last Sunday. Uh, an event where uh, Thierry Giroux won with 9 minutes ahead of uh, Anders Holmberg with uh, Daniel Hopman in, in third place. A very strong start field so uh, there should be a lot of good, good runners to, to look at in the, in the analysis of the split times. Uh, today many people are more focused on GPS analysis than on split time analysis when they try to understand a race, but uh, you can uh, find out a lot based on, on the split times as we will uh, look at here. So my focus today is on, on the performance index and uh, how you can get information about the race out of the performance index. Uh, we first look at a table here to, uh, to explain a little bit about what the performance index actually is. Uh, we choose the class MAN21 and uh, we, uh, I've already chosen performance index but uh, if you come from, uh, from the default you go, you go in the menu here and choose performance index. Uh, you then get a list of, of all runners and their time and an average performance index and performance index on each leg over here. Uh, I'll first expl explain what the, uh, the performance index is. Uh, when you look at the all of the start field, the average good time on the leg is defined as the uh, average of the 25% best of the of the runners. Then uh, you take this average, divide it on uh, the runner's time on this split and you get the performance index. That is if the runner has exactly the same time as the average of the 21st percent you will get a uh, 100% performance index. If you are 20% better than the average of the 25 best percent you have a uh, performance index of 120% and so on. So everything above 100% is, uh, is very good, especially if you have a, a strong start field. So the performance index is very dependent on your start field. In a poor start field it won't tell you anything. In a very strong start field it will tell you very much. So in this race we have a fairly strong start field, so the uh, the performance index will give you quite a lot of, uh, of information. Uh, so if we look at uh, Thierry Jojo over here, we see that to the first control he has a performance index of uh, 107%, and 110%, 112% and so on. To the fifth leg, 131%, that's a very high performance index, and so on. Cons consistently, performance over 100%. Uh, let's uh, look at the graphs now. Um, I guess this is uh, the, t the way you usually look at the, the splits, this uh, split browser type of, of view. What we will now do now is to go in the menu here and uh, choose performance index. Uh, we can start with the, uh, the vertical bars. Here we see the performance index for uh, Thierry Giroux on each leg. To the first control he has around uh, 107%. Then here is the very good leg to number 5 where he has 131%. And so on. A few uh, poor ones here at the short legs from 25, 26, 27. Okay, but the interesting thing, in my opinion at least, is when we go over here and look at uh, the density curve. Uh, let's look only at Thierry Giroux by choosing him here. 
what we see here now is uh, an uh, integration of the uh, performance index on each single leg. So if uh, a runner would have 100% performance index on every leg, there would be a very narrow high peak and the race would have been very consistent. So uh, what a runner wants is to get one high peak as far to the right as possible. So then you have a consistent, very good race. So uh, Yuju had the majority of his race uh, at a performance of around 106%. And uh, I'd say this is his, uh, his average level in, uh, in the race. Even though his performance index for the entire course is 111%, this is where the majority of his, his race is. He has one very, very good leg here, the leg from number 4 to number 5, with performance index of more than 130%. And he has some legs in the area here between 110 and 120%, which are some very good legs. Um, what I'll do now is to, to compare this with some of the other runners. We, we start with uh, Anders Holmberg in set second spot. Uh, he is not that interesting because we know that he has been with uh, Thierry for uh, large parts of, of the course. Actually, most of these two peaks here above 100% are from the time when he is together with, uh, with Thierry. So uh, this is not very relevant for, uh, for comparison. Uh, but if we go on to uh, Daniel Hubmann, it's quite interesting to see that uh, his consistent level when looking away from, from mistakes is at 107.8%, uh, which is actually higher than uh, the level of uh, Juju. Uh, but uh, Hubmann has uh, a very big mistake here. I think that was on the, on the sixth control, and he has uh, several rather big time losses here. But uh, his level is uh, very close to to the level of uh, Juru except for Juru's uh, excellent legs here. So it's not as far away as it could look from the from the results. If we go on to uh, Philip Adamski, he has done a very consistent race for, for most of the race. Very high peak here. Uh, but performance not as good as uh, as Giorgio. It looks like his potential to uh, to beat uh, Giorgio is lower than uh, what we saw for uh, for Hubman here, because he has the majority of his legs uh, actually a little bit uh, above this uh, highest peak of of Giorgio. Going down to uh, Eric Rust, Rust we uh, we see very high peak here to the right of uh, of the the high peak of Juju but a lot of uh, of mistakes many bad uh, bad legs over here with uh, with low performance index uh, going down to Baptiste Rolier again we see uh, some uh, very consistent running here and also many legs here around 110-111 percent. So clearly a very high potential also for uh, for Baptiste. Going further down to Ole Boostrum, uh, doesn't look that good, but there is quite a good peak here, but quite many legs in this, in this region. Matthias Müller uh, does not seem to be right where he should be just now, based on, on the performance index. Valentin Novikov also, correspondingly, far below. Uh, Pasi Ikon, uh, a big peak over here. Probably not, either not running fast or not used to the terrain yet. And so on. Uh, I'll pick out a few. Matthias Mertz, he, is, uh, he has many legs here at uh, around 108% where one should be to to be able to to fight uh, Juru but 
many many lakes which are not good over here with low performance index same for Mark Launstein also a, a good top here around 106 uh, percent but then many mistakes here but also a good part here uh, I won't uh, look so much more here but we can go down to uh, one runner which uh, has a interesting curve and that is uh, William Lind who uh, was with uh, Juru and um, and Holmberg for some time and has several good legs here but also this very bad leg uh, down here okay so uh, that was a small introduction to how you can understand the potential of, of different runners from uh, from the performance index I think you could understand more from uh, or a lot more from the performance index about potential of the runners and, uh, and the race than just looking at the results and the split times um, another nice function in uh, in win splits is to look at the the error free time uh, that also gives you some information about uh, about the race uh, I think I made a special uh, file here where I took away a few runners because when you look at error free times uh, and some runners don't have all the splits that looks uh, no good so this is a special class without the runners with problems so by clicking on this symbol, symbol up here in, uh, in WinSplits uh, WinSplits calculates the error free times uh, and when looking away from all mistakes we see that uh, the victory of uh, Thierry would have been only 4 minutes down to these two but they were together with, uh, with Thierry for big parts of the, of the race and uh, five minutes down to Baptiste Rollier and Hubmann, Launstein uh, just behind uh, Gris Rost also and Lukas Bartek so uh, even when we look at uh, mistake free time uh, this was uh, there was a long way from Juru and down to uh, Rollier who was the next who was running alone for significant parts of the, of the race okay we can take a brief look at the, at the women as well uh, here are the splits and the error free times three minutes ahead for Bilstam ahead of Eliasson if we add the mistakes again uh, we get five minutes down to Helena Jansson then Eliasson eight minutes behind Alexandersson ten minutes behind but uh, what I wanted to show again was the performance index. Um, Annika Bilstam has a, had a very good and consistent race. Um, she has uh, a good peak around 116% and some small peaks here down to 87, 88% with, uh, with mistakes or time losses and uh, a very good leg over here as well. Comparing to Helena Jansson in second, even her her best controls were uh, not as good as the the peak of Annika Bilstam, which means that even uh, even if uh, Helena Jansson could move most of her controls up here, she would have a hard time beating uh, Bilstam today. Lena Eliasson is uh, even worse in that respect. She has one extremely good leg here, another short one here which is good, but uh, the majority is uh, well below uh, the performance of um, Annika Bilstam. Going down to uh, Tove Alexanderson, even further down, very consistent, uh, big parts of the race, but also several clear mistakes here on, on many legs. The same for Lina Gustafsson, Maya Alm. Going further down here, we don't find any other uh, runners who uh, who seems to have the potential to uh, to be close to uh, Bilstam uh, in this race. Okay, so uh, that was a, an introduction to the performance index. 
I won't go more in, in details now and I'm not sure if all the conclusions are always correct but uh, I'm very sure that this is a good tool to use in your, in your analysis both to understand your own race and to understand the race of, uh, of runners you're coaching if you're a coach. Thank you for your attention and uh, remember to visit otraining.net if you have questions about uh, orienteering technical training.